Hello wild people, welcome to AK Wild One. Today Flash and I are going to talk about how we're training for our PCT adventure this summer. This year we're planning to complete the sections we missed last year, including Northern California, Oregon, and the last 30 miles to the Canadian border. Last year we were turned back because of smoke and uh, closures in Oregon, so we wound up skipping ahead to Washington. We're going to talk about a few focus areas of our training and see how, how they line up. So first thing we're going to talk about is conditioning. So Flash, how are you, what kind of conditioning are you doing this year for the PCT? I'm up to eight miles a day now and just on flat ground because we have, all we have is our trails out here and our snow. <laughs> So as soon as I can, as soon as the snow clears, I'm going to start adding hills to that, adding more distance, um, up to maybe 10, 15 miles a day, adding weight. Um, and along with that, I'm doing yoga. And with yoga, I do movement of my joints and then stretching and strengthening. Um, also working on balance because balance is really good for like crossing streams, things like that, and incorporating breathing. Okay, for my conditioning exercising, uh, what I'm doing is I just love to, I just love my fat bike. I just love to ride my fat bike everywhere. And we've had a good winter here. The trails have been great, frozen hard. And so every day I've been trying to go fat biking between five and 20 miles a day. And then right now we're going through breakup. And so the trails are getting soft and uh, getting unreliable. And so pretty soon I'll start walking the road and probably walking five or six miles a day. And then maybe I'll try to put in a 20 miler in there once a week. Um, then hopefully the snow will be gone by June. And then I really wanna start adding some elevation. So we have some steep mountain trails around here and I'd like to start going up and down mountains to get my footwork and to build up my knees and my ankles to get used to the rigors of the trail and then um, slowly start adding some weight. So those are, our two, those are our two philosophies or practices of conditioning. Now we're, gonna look, now we're gonna turn to strength exercising. So how are we strengthening our bodies uh, for our PCT adventure this summer? Well, last year, I, my back felt really weak a lot of the time, so I was really searching for ways on the web to strengthen my upper body and we don't have we don't have access to weights we don't have access to a gym so i'm probably going to use to try to strengthen my back my shoulders more for carrying the backpack um, using exercise bands push-ups pull-ups tricep dips and then i have a lot of back exercises that i do because i have scoliosis and just helping with that and balancing my pack and um, a lot of core strengthening. Okay. One of the things I hate, I do not like treadmills and I really don't like gyms per se. So I like to, I, I like my strength exercising to be as close to the real world as possible. So what I've been doing this whole winter is cutting and hauling about seven cords of firewood. And uh, that has really been one way that I've improved my strength because I wind up going into the forest and I have to carry these big logs out of the forest and carry them to my sled. And then of course the snow machine carries them the rest of the way. But I found that doing seven cords of wood helped improve my upper body strength. Now I'm done collecting wood for the winter. And so I'm gonna have to search for new ideas. Maybe I'll start doing the old, you know, seventh and eighth grade gym routine of push-ups and sit-ups and those kinds of things. But maybe I'll find some other work around the house that will help me strengthen my core. Um, I wanna pay attention to my knees and I also wanna pay attention to my ankles because last year I felt a little bit of pain going down the hills, especially on my knees. And so I've come up with a few exercises that I plan to implement to strengthen my knees and to strengthen my ankles. Okay, now the, the next topic is nutrition. 
Okay, so I think it's a really good idea, especially at our age. I'm 62, he's 63, um, to get a physical at your doctor's and to get some blood work, just to know, um, to make sure that everything's working well in your body. Last year, like a few days before we left, my doctor called and said, your cholesterol is high. <laughs> so I worried about that on the trail. And she said, only eat me one day a week. I thought, well, I'm, I don't know how that'll be with all the miles we're hiking, but I tried to work on that. Um, this year, um, I have researched that your you should your calories should be about 35 to 50% from carbohydrates, mostly a complex, not so much sugar. So I'm going to try to go with less sugar. <laughs> Let's see if that works. Um, protein, 15 to 20%, and fats, 35 to 50%. Um, What's really going to be hard is on the hills. I always wanted to eat candy in the hills going up in the Snicker bars. But, um, but we'll see how that goes. Um, as far as supplements, um, I want to try some superfood powders. If you know of any, leave that in the comments below. Um, salmon oil. We're going to try dehydrated foods. Try dehydrate um, more vegetables and fruit. I always like to make like a morning shake with different nutritious things going into it and I can sip it all morning. Um, load up on salad in town and um, that's about it. Okay, so this year, I, for the first time in my life, I've been able to kind of control my weight. Last year on the PCT, it was a blessing because I lost 35 pounds, but winter I've gained 15 back. But I'm still starting out 20 pounds less than when I started out last year. And so that's a good thing. And the way I've done that is just by paying attention to my tr nutrition a little bit more. I've cut down my beloved, my loved, well-loved Dr. Peppers down to one a week. And lattes, I really like lattes for some reason. I'm, I've got a soft spot for lattes. Well, they're hard to buy on the trail, so. Yeah, they're also hard to buy on the trail. <laughs> um, I've cut those down to one a month. And then mostly the protein we eat out here in Alaska, we're, we're very fortunate. We have lots of red salmon, and so we'll eat salmon and then moose meat. So it's pretty healthy protein. And then the downside of that is vegetables and fruits out here are very, very expensive. But anyway, we've been supplementing. We, each day we're, we're eating uh, a portion or two of fruits and vegetables and produce. So I think we've been eating pretty well. I've cut out as much sugar as I can because um, I every morning I weigh myself and I, I have a target weight and if I start going higher I think well okay it's salad tonight for dinner and um, I feel positive about that that I'll actually be starting the trail 20 pounds lighter than when I did last year and then I know um, by the time we're done maybe I'll have lost 10 more pounds. Okay, so now the next uh, next topic we're going to talk about is how we're mentally getting prepared, which is a huge part of this. So this is a major thing for me because for me, I always feel like about 75% of my hiking is psychologically based, you know. But um, my why is probably about the same. It's just I want to do as many great adventures before I get too old to do anything. And... Um, so I've been thinking a lot of how I'm going to go about this differently this time because I had a lot of mental breakdowns. And I'm going to, I'm a yoga teacher, so last time I incorporated a lot of the postures in yoga, which are called the asana. So this time I'm going to try to incorporate all eight limbs of yoga or all eight parts of yoga um, going through the yamas, niyamas, asanas, pranayama, which is the breathing. Um, bringing your senses inward, pratyahara, um, meditation, concentration, maybe I'll get to bliss, samadhi, I don't know. But I'm gonna try to incorporate all eight limbs of yoga and be try to stop all my negative thinking because I negative think way too much and be more open-minded to things, not so judgmental. Um, so I'm gonna be working that on that daily. This year I'm gonna be strong mentally. Okay, so what I've been thinking about is how much I really enjoy being outside and sleeping in the dirt, going feral, mm -hmm. and being part of a, part of the great outdoors. And like Flash, I'm also thinking, you know, be, I'm 63 now, and how many more summers do I have to do this kind of stuff? Hopefully I can keep going until I'm 70, reevaluate, and maybe keep going. But things happen and things change. 
So I want to make sure I seize this opportunity. I, I remember pretty nostalgic about the trail, about how I didn't want to get off because I felt like I was in the finest shape of my life. And so I'm constantly tapping back into that nostalgia. Um, I can't wait to get back in really good shape when I can hike those, those trails, those steep trails to the top and feel good again. I, I can't wait to get back and to pay attention to the videography and the beautiful pictures and try to capture uh, those cool moments on the trail. Uh, it was such a joy to create my last documentary. So there's that creative pursuit. And we might need to remain strong mentally because this year, you know, we're going through Oregon and we could run into mosquitoes, which I hear may rival Alaska's mosquitoes. We'll see and how that goes. we're taking a dog. That's going to change things a lot, yeah. too. So yeah. are we going to talk about gear change? Yeah. Okay. Go, let's talk about gear. So I, ha like I said, I have scoliosis and I would have real bad pain in my back and I'd have to start stop every few miles and <laughs> crack it kind of to make it feel better. So even though I, I have a ULA circuit and it's a very comfortable pack, we really like our circuits, but I've just been looking at maybe some options that might be a little more comfortable for my back. So I was looking at the AARN Arn pack that's made in New Zealand. Um, I'm not sure how durable it is, but it, I heard it's really comfortable. So I'm looking at other packs. I'm going to go with lighter base layer because um, I had a merino wool base layer, which was great. It was just heavy, and I don't think I need that much in Oregon. So I'm going to try maybe going with a lighter silk base layer. And I'm going to try a poncho, I think. It goes over me and my backpack and see how that works out. Because I feel like when I'm wearing rain gear, I just get too sweaty and I feel too constricted. Okay, um, so as far as gear goes, um, I'm going to continue to use my trekking poles. I found they were really helpful. The tips broke off, the metal tips broke off, but they didn't break, which is pretty amazing. And so I'm going to keep training with my trekking poles. And I found that, you know, when there was something, when there was a slippery descent or when I stumbled, they probably sa saved me from a greater injury. So I'm going to keep going with that. Um, the only other gear change I'm going to make is probably in the area of photography and videography. I'm going to try to capture sounds of the trail. So I'm going to bring a couple of lapel mics and a, um, a little shotgun microphone and maybe try to maybe do some interviews. We'll just see how it all goes, how, how we feel at the end of the day. But I'm very happy with my, my gear and I felt like... I felt, you know, one of the things I think is really important is once you get your gear kind of dialed in, it's probably more important to pay attention to your training. You see lots of videos about people and their gear, and they, they obsess over getting their weight, their base weight down. And I, under, I understand that. But for us, I think we put our emphasis on the fact that we were older, we were at a little bit of a disadvantage, and we put most of our emphasis into training. And so uh, that's where we're still focused now, not so much on the gear. And so now I guess the the bottom line to summarize summarize all of what I think I'm saying and then Flash will let you finish up. Uh, we're we're moving every day. We're staying. We're we're trying to. We're hiking. We're biking. We're doing anything we can uh, to stay moving and to simulate what the conditions and the experience we're going to have on the PCT. We're also probably spending a lot of attention on our nutrition too. So we're trying to stay healthy, keep our weight down and practice good eating habits. And then we're really getting excited to hit the trail in July and uh, we look forward to it. And how would you summarize what you've said, Flash? Well, I'm pretty much focusing on things I did last time, but I mean, last time we did over 2000 miles, this time we're doing 600. So it's gonna be a little different, I think, we start slow and I think that's the way to go. At least it is for us. We will probably start at 10 miles a day or so. Um, I'm going to be looking at it a little different mentally. And of course our dog will be the main part of any decisions that we make. If, um, you know, if we need to slow down, speed up, if, if she needs to get off the trail or if I need to get off the trail with her, you know, so we're just going to be really open-minded about that. Thank you for joining us, and as always, stay wild, my friends.